scanning for audio. Welcome to a Tin Dog Podcast. Talking about... No, I'm not going to be reviewing the new story. Not yet. I want to talk about something old. Something marvellous. Something out on DVD to buy on Monday. The Ambassadors of Death. Ah. Uh, there's nothing like a first season John Pertwee story. Caroline John is just brilliant as Liz. The Brig scene is... Not particularly great unit uniform, but this is a stonkingly good story. So much better than I remember. The only times I'd ever seen this story before the DVDs arrived was on a VHS someone had sent me, taped off UK Gold in its not-so-original black-and-white format, recorded on long play. So you can imagine it was a bit like watching static TV with John Pertwee's voice in the background. Not quite that bad, but you can kind of picture it. This is just a glorious picture, and the regenerated colour, well, it gets my vote. I can't see where it should and shouldn't be. Perhaps that's just the settings on my TV. Other people have said it doesn't look quite as good as it could, but I've got genuinely no issues with it. The basic story? Well, when dealing with John Pertwee's unit era, you've got three basic storylines. You've got Mad Scientist... And you've got Alien Invasion. It kind of fits into the bit of both category on this one. Recorded around the time of the moon landings, this places the unit story and unit canonicity slightly in the future. A probe sent to Mars, a manned probe. So whether you get those stories set now, or indeed now, being the, well, first, second decade of the 22nd... Oh, good lord, time's fleeting. It's not the 22nd century at all. So it does kind of mess with unit dating. Of course, it was meant to be set ten years on, but that's not really important. What is important is that the storyline itself is a little bit unnerving, a little bit unsettling, and was something that, as a fan, I wanted to see for a very, very long time. Mars Probe 7 is sent off towards Mars. All communication is lost. Recovery 7 is sent. It's a bit tense over at the BBC. You get to see what Davros looked like without his makeup, via the gift of TV host. The actual ambassadors from a spaceship which had been intercepted halfway between Earth and Mars have actually arrived on Earth and are being used for boring political reasons. Yes, it's long. Yes, it's a little bit drawn out. And yes, it's got some brilliant action work by Havoc. There are no real monsters but there are villains. And that's where this story has its massive strengths. Here, we're getting to see Pertwee genuinely finding his feet, genuinely working it all out and being the Doctor. Yes, there are moments which don't fit in a Doctory kind of way. It does make something disappear in a conjuring kind of way, which was clearly done on a video effect. Which was clearly done using a video effect rather than some sort of sleight of hand. But you can forgive that because it's the Doctor. It's a two-disc set, so really, it's the second disc that should interest us, because the first disc's just got one of the best Pertwee stories ever made. It's one of those rare things, a seven-episode story, here presented in colour, but it's the commentary on disc one that's genuinely stunning. It was recorded some time ago, and when you hear the list of actors involved, well, you'll kind of see why. Basically, Caroline John, Nick Courtney, Peter Halliday, Geoffrey Beavers... Michael Ferguson's script editor Terence Dix, who kind of co-wrote it. Stunt coordinator Derek Ware and performers Derek Martin. Well, all of these people moderated by Tabor Haydock. It's simply fantastic. On disc two, you've got a lovely making of, 26 minutes long, where the cast and crew are going to look at how it was made. An original trailer made for the story, 
Tomorrow's Times, The Third Doctor, where Peter Purvis talks about The Third Doctor's time as he appeared in newspapers. It's worthy of note that at Hooverville, Peter Purvis was approached by Siobhan, and Siobhan said that she'd seen the extras on the DVD. And in these extras, Peter Purvis had seemed slightly miffed that he hadn't been invited to the 10th anniversary Doctor Who party. So Siobhan had gone away and created an invite. Admittedly, it's a bit late and you would need a time travel in order to turn up. But the thought was there. There's a photo gallery and a coming soon, as well as the Radio Times listings all available in PDF form. It's a lovely story in a lovely box set, proving that although the series is nearly done, it's nowhere near past its best. And with that, I'll fade away and I will return very shortly with the review you were probably expecting. So until next time, be seeing you. You've been listening to the Tin Dog Podcast. Doctor Who and its associated shows are copyright of the BBC. No infringement is intended. To contact the show, email tin-dog at hotmail.co.uk. To order or simply find out more about the book Hoostrology, the Time Traveller's Almanac, visit hoostrology.com. The Tin Dog Podcast is a founder member of the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance. There's been no radio contact for seven months. Something's gone badly wrong with Mars Probe 7. Next Saturday, a new serial begins when Doctor Who meets the Ambassadors of Death. Now we've got to find out who's sending that signal. Someone is determined to steal the recovery capsule. People behind this are trying to kidnap Liz Shaw. I don't know what we brought down in Mars Probe 7. But it certainly wasn't human. What happened to the British astronauts from Mars Probe 7? A new Doctor Who adventure starts next week. Doctor Who and the Ambassadors of Death. Back to today on BBC One with the Debbie Reynolds Show.